But you did mention, Alex, Frankie de Jong there. Now, it's quite interesting because we've mentioned Frankie de Jong every show so far. And just before I went live, there was a, a bit of news coming out. I don't know how reliable it is from Barcelona, but there's a discussion that uh, Barcelona's new centre-back, and I think he might be playing in goal in the next game. Uh, 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 Xavi's made it quite clear that he doesn't want to play him in the midfield. May now be willing to take a 50% pay cut. Do you, where, where do you think this De Jong deal is is going now? Do you think it's just becoming an embarrassing saga for United or do you think the long game will bear fruit? I think they're staying patient. I, I would be amazed if De Jong agreed to take a 50% pay cut, especially when he still owed all that money, £17 million in defer wages. I know the narrative has been, well, he doesn't want to join United anyway. I don't think that is the case. And, and we've had this conversation privately and on the air. Surely uh, John Murta, Richard Arnold and, and Ten Hag himself wouldn't have spent so many weeks, so much time, so much effort in trying to close out a deal for a player who had no interest in the move. I think it's a it's a game uh, being played between De Jong, his advisors and Barcelona. They want the money that's owed and then I think he will uh, feel more inclined to join Manchester United. But I do think this one is, is going to run and run. Uh, Barcelona obviously have, have moved into stage three now of their um, refinancing, which has, has freed up the money to, to make this bid for Jules Kunde, But as you say, Xavi has come out and said that he wants to use him as a centre-back, not in midfield. For me, that's disrespectful again to De Jong. I think Barcelona's conduct has been classless, to be honest. And I think he is right to feel aggrieved about the way that he's been treated. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. I think I think uh, what, what, what annoys me the most is that, and many clubs are in this situation, but our midfield was, was a major issue for United last year, is that, Whatever happens with De Jong, he he won't be playing against Brighton two weeks today, and he no. probably won't be playing against Brentford the following week. And that's just not prepare. That's not preparation, is it? And another player that we're not prepared for. And I mentioned this earlier on on the United Stand is all right. Let's play Anthony Martial up against Brighton. His injury record's not that great. Pulls a hamstring in the first ten minutes. Ronaldo's not on the bench. Who are you going to use? We were talking about this privately last night about this potential loan deal. Propos- ridiculous. Is there anything in Ronaldo going on loan to Atletico Madrid? Because I find this just bizarre. Well, I think all of the Ronaldo stories that come out are, are being led by George Mendes and his advisors and the Atletico interest. And I, I, I use that word in the loosest possible sense because I'm not sure how strong their interest actually is, is being driven by George Mendes. This is a player who wants to play in the Champions League uh, next season. He's been offered to just about every big club in Europe. Atletico, the latest uh, to be given the chance to sign Ronaldo. He's even offered to take a pay cut. At the moment, they're not looking like they're particularly keen to pursue it. Maybe they might if uh, Anton Griezmann could be moved on, but that would look a difficult deal to do, someone on uh, the money that he is. So I, I don't think anything's changed with Ronaldo. I think he wants to go. Uh, Mendes is trying to fix him up with the Champions League club. I think what we do need to know, and I'll, I'll do some more digging next week, is is when he plans to return to Carrington because mm. as you say the, yeah, the, the, the first game of the season is two weeks away there's no way on earth that Ronaldo can be in United starting lineup uh, that day because I know he's a he's a physical specimen I know he's been keeping himself fit he's posted pictures of him uh, working in the gym in Lisbon but there's a difference between you know you know gym workout and, and being match fit to play the kind of style that Eric Ten Hag wants United to so I don't think we'll see Ronaldo in a United shirt this side of, of transfer deadline day on September the 1st and that's a long, long way away. And I don't expect him to start against Brighton. I didn't expect that. You've got to be part of pre-season, but to have him on the bench would be nice. He, he did do that for Juventus a year ago. I think it's a big week, uh, Alex, for Ronaldo. I do. I think that, as you say, we're back now from the tour. We're back in training on Tuesday. Why is he not going to be there? I am very aware of the personal issues. I do think some people aren't aware of that. We don't know what those personal issues are, but you've had Bruno Fernandes mention it, Diego Delo, both Portuguese players. Um, I think Nani mentioned it as well, out on the tour when we played Melbourne. There may well be something there that is that, that, that is being kept quiet, and I think it's always very difficult to predict what's going yeah. on. I think some United fans want to say he's on strike. We don't know what that's all about, but what we do know is he does want to leave, and that obviously creates an uncertainty that we have around the midfield as well. So interesting week ahead with Ronaldo. 